uh, explicating the discoveries of ramanujan and uh, is one of the world's foremost authority on the works of ramanujan uh, he has published uh, five volumes on uh, ramanujan's notebook and another five volumes he has published on uh, ramanujan's lost notebook uh, with the uh, uh, george andrews and uh, these uh, uh, volumes in fact uh, provide a very readable and complete account of ramanujan's work and uh, uh, this of course this these these volumes are uh, outcome of his most clever and intense research uh, that he has carried out over the period of 40 years and uh, he, uh, for his uh, contribution uh, he He received uh, Steele Prize of American Mathematical Society and many other prestigious prize he has received, and uh, uh, he uh, was also elected uh, as uh, as a fellow of American Mathematical Society in 2012, and uh, it's a it's a it's a really a great honor for all all of us to have uh, Professor Bruce Byrne with us uh, as a speaker in the session. and i am really thankful to him uh, uh, for having accepted this invitation Thanks, and uh, for at such a short notice and uh, in, in fact uh, uh, he he is so kind uh, to me uh, since last 20 years uh, i uh, uh, when i met him for the first time in 2001 professor bruce if you remember Uh, in a uh, uh, conference at Institute of Mathematical Science in Chennai, and since then uh, I have a, uh, I have a uh, meeting, I have a chance of meeting him at uh, several occasions at different places, and uh, he was always kind to me, uh, known to me from the almost twenty uh, years, and uh, I'm happy to inform you that uh, this session is uh, being attended uh, by. Uh, total number of participants that uh, uh, have registered for this sessions are two thousand sixty ones and sixty one, and they are from twenty uh, three countries. And uh, uh, I'm also happy to acknowledge the presence of some very senior mathematicians uh, from India and abroad. And uh, I can see uh, Professor Arun Verma in this room. I can see Professor. Uh, Bhargava in this room and Professor Bruce Byrne, uh, your students uh, in India, they are also attending this uh, conference. It's a uh, 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 it's a very proud uh, privilege for us. I once again uh, extend a very warm welcome to all of you uh, on the behalf of uh, Department of Mathematics and Computer Science of Bau Banarsi Das University. I'll not take much of your time uh, uh, before I invite uh, Professor Bruce Byrne. I I would like to make uh, two or three important points. Uh, uh, participants, please uh, keep yourself in mute mode uh, to avoid any disturbance uh, during the session. And uh, it is also requested that please do not uh, 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 post any message in the chat. Uh, we 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 do honor your presence here. You don't need to introduce yourself. and uh, you you please don't uh, uh, post anything in the uh, chat uh, lastly i would like to uh, i would li also like to inform you that uh, professor bruce has agreed uh, to uh, answer some questions at the end of the session so if you ha have any question you can you can type in the chat and these questions will be answered at the end of the uh, at the end of his presentation so uh, i once again uh, will request that please do not post anything in the chat except your questions and keep yourself uh, in uh, mute mode thank you very much uh, so uh, i'll i'll request uh, Pro professor bruce to please uh, start your session sir please increase your volume keep yourself please in mute mode Professor, Professor Bruce, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Please, please, you can start. Okay. I think this is okay. 
Okay, all, am I all set here? Yeah, we can't see you. Just this. Just let me. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much for the invitation to speak with you about Ramanujan this morning, afternoon, or evening in India. So, as the title indicates, uh, we are observing the 100th anniversary of Ramanujan's death. On June 1st through the 5th in 1987, we had a meeting at the University of Illinois uh, to celebrate the centenary of Ramanujan's birth on December 22nd, 1887. And I would like to begin my lecture uh, with a few, uh, with um, a few words from a talk that S. Chandra Sekar, Nobel laureate in physics from India, uh, gave at our meeting. It must have been a day in April 1920 when I was not quite 10 years old, when my mother told me of an item in the newspaper of the day that a famous Indian mathematician, Ramanujan by name, had died the preceding day. And she told me further that Ramanujan had gone to England some years earlier had collaborated with some famous English mathematicians and that he had returned only very recently and was well known internationally for what he had achieved. I can still recall the gladness I felt at the assurance that one brought up under circumstances similar to my own could have achieved what I could not grasp. I think that it is fair to say that almost all the mathematicians who reached distinction during the three or four decades following Ramanujan were directly or indirectly inspired by his example. So this is a very in inspiring speech for me. I had uh, begun work on Ramanujan over 10 years earlier, and indeed this inspired me to keep working on uh, Ramanujan. So let me... Uh, Sir, please increase your volume. I think the problem is with your speaker. My speaker? Okay. Well, sir, your 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 voice is okay. The, pro the problem is with the one of the uh, participant. Okay. Yes, sir, it's audible, sir. It's audible, clear, no problem. Okay, let me just give you an outline of my lecture. Um, I'll give you a short history of Ramanujan's life, history of the Ramanujan notebooks, and then his lost notebook. I have been working on Ramanujan's notebooks and lost notebook for about 46 years. And then I'll give examples from both Ramanujan's notebooks and lost notebook. So this is not a chronological uh, de description of my lecture these topics will all be intermingled together. So let me begin uh, by discussing the photographs that we have of Ramanujan. So this is the most famous photograph, his passport photo. It was taken prior to his leaving in England for India in 1919. He was very ill at the time as he had been for over two years. And he was too ill to go to the photographer to have his picture taken for his passport. So the photographer came to his nursing home and you can see him in his pajamas here, pajamas and bathrobe. We actually uh, owe a debt to Chandra Sekar for this photograph. In 1936, he visited uh, Mrs. Ramanujan in Triplican uh, in Madras, and he asked her if she had a photograph, a picture of her late husband. And she said, the only photograph I have is from his passport photo. So she gave Chandra Sekar the passport photo. And then it was this uh, negative 
that I, from which the picture was made uh, for Hardy's book, Ramanujan. So in his book, he cropped the photograph so that the passport stamps did not appear. So the second picture we have uh, is when he received, uh, uh, when he was elected to the Royal Society. And uh, here he is at the center of the photo. We unfortunately do not know the names of the other people in the photograph. There is some controversy about this photo. Ramanujan received a bachelor's degree by research from Cambridge University in 1916. And some think that this actually is from that occasion when he received his degree. And the reason for thinking that is that in this photograph, he has uh, a rather full appearance, whereas before he left for England, he had lost considerable weight. So it is a bit interesting that uh, if this were actually taken in 1918 at his election of the Royal Society, that he looks here that he doesn't, uh, appears that he hasn't lost any weight. And then the third photograph we have was taken in uh, England. So let me identify all these people in the photograph. So this is Kayananda Rao. Uh, he was a student of Hardy and his stay in England almost coincided exactly with that of Ramanujan. This person here is uh, Settler Sundara Surya Narayan Shastri. Uh, he got his um, degree at Oxford in returned to India and became quite a famous philosopher and taught at the University of Madras. And this person here is also a mathematician. He came from a very poor background in India. His name is Saneti Surya Narayana. And although he did not make a name for himself research, he was a well-known uh, teacher uh, in India. And then lastly, this is T. Adi Narayana Chetty. He actually comes from Kumbakonam and was very prominent uh, in uh, the liberation of India from, and was a good friend of uh, Gandhi. And then lastly, we have a picture of Ramanujan sitting in the chair. Uh, this was excised from a, another photograph, a uh, group photograph of Ramanujan. So those are, the, those are the four photographs that we actually have uh, of Ramanujan. I visited uh, Ramanujan's home in And uh, this was a very thrilling experience for me to see actually the home in which Ramanujan lived in Kumbakonam. So Kumbakonam uh, was not his birthplace. He was actually born in Iroda uh, in the home of his maternal grandmother. And then she and her family returned to Kumbakonam where Ramanujan lived for most of his life. So behind that bamboo curtain, uh, you will see above the doorway, a small rectangle. This is actually uh, a photograph of Ramanujan that was cut from a newspaper by the family living in the home. And it was the only indication that this was the home of India's most famous mathematician. And I took a couple of pictures inside the home. The, this fellow here uh, behind the children is R. Balasubramanian at Math Science in Madras, Chennai. And he is the one who accompanied me on this trip to Kumbakonam. And here's another uh, photograph inside the home. It now has been turned into a museum. I can understand uh, this one would want to preserve the home in which Ramanujan worked, but now the home does not look like it was in Ramanujan's time. And so it is a little bit regrettable, although I can understand uh, why this is uh, been turned into a museum. 
So Ramanujan, as a youngster, worked on a slate, as all school children did at that time. And for his mathematics, he would just do all of his work on a slate and then record results in notebooks. This actually is the slate that Ramanujan worked on. And it is in the possession of the family of Esnarayana Iyer. I will explain later uh, who he is. And this is the grandson of Esnarayana Iyer. Uh, he has since passed away and the slate is in the possession of his son Srikant. This is my favorite picture of myself uh, holding Ramanujan's slate. Uh, actually, my wife disagrees with me on this matter. She claims that our wedding picture is the best picture uh, that uh, we have of myself. Well, I've compromised, and so now I really say that our wedding picture and this picture of me holding the slate are my two favorite pictures of myself. So Ramanujan uh, began to record his results in notebooks. We think at about the time he entered the government college of Kumbakonam in 1903. Now, we're not really sure of, about this. Uh, it could be that he actually started recording his results earlier. So we actually have three notebooks that he left us uh, containing the result, his results. So these are now at uh, the University of Madras. And uh, I took this picture on my uh, visit to India in 1985 when I also visited Ramanujan's home. So here is a picture of a couple pages in one of the notebooks. And you will see that there is a reflection off of the pages. Uh, for those of you who are younger, uh, let me say that when we had to take pictures uh, not outside in the sun, we used flash bulbs and the flash from my camera reflected off of these pages. And the reason there is also a reflection is that the pages were laminated. It was turned out that the notebooks were deteriorating partly from insects. And so they were laminated to actually preserve the notebooks. It turned out that this was not good because the pages began to crack, the, the lamination began to crack. I'll say a few more words about this later. So Ramanujan married in 2000, um, in 1909, and he moved to Madras in 1910, and um, he had tried to get another education at the Sayapa College in Madras, but he failed, uh, just as he failed uh, his exams uh, in Kumbakonam, where he tried to get a college education earlier. So for a few months, I think 15 altogether, he was supported by R. Ramachandra Rao, uh, a tax collector, uh, near Madras, but he didn't really think uh, he deserved to have um, this kind of salary, so to speak, without working. So he applied for a job as a clerk in the Port Trust office in Madras. And the chief accountant there was S. Narayana Iyer. So S. Narayana Iyer was actually one of the best mathematicians in India at the time. So he could appreciate uh, Ramanujan's mathematics. In fact, it's reported that uh, he and Ramanujan, uh, after work hours, often worked on mathematics until the wee hours of the morning. So he and Sir Francis Spring, who was the manager of the Madras, Madras Port Trust Office, or chair of the Madras Port Trust Office, encouraged Ramanujan to write to English mathematicians about his work. So the first mathematician he wrote was M.J.M. Hill, a professor at the University of London. We have his reply, and clearly he didn't quite really understand what Ramanujan was uh, communicating. And then Ramanujan 
wrote to two Cambridge mathematicians, H.F. Uh, Baker and E.W. Hobson, and these did not apply, reply to his letters. And then he wrote uh, G.H. Hardy, uh, as you know, one of the great mathematicians of the 20th century. So he replied uh, immediately after uh, receiving Ramanujan's first letter. So in Ramanujan's first letter, he stated over 60 results that he had proved. So Hardy and Littlewood carefully went through uh, his first letter and so there were many results which they were knew, known, for which they were known, but others in which uh, they thought were correct, but they couldn't prove. So I thought I would give you just three examples uh, from the first letter that Ramana wrote to Hardy. So he, sa he says here the number of uh, numbers greater than A and less than B that are prime uh, is given by this formula. So K is given decimally, but actually he had an exact formula for this constant. There's actually a misprint here in Ramanujan's uh, letter. This really should be theta of B, um, B being the upper uh, bound here of the integral and B is thought to be large. Yeah. And then theta of X is small when compared to uh, K. So this actually was first proved by Landau in 1908. And it's remarkable that uh, Ramanujan discovered this uh, all on his own without any uh, input or any of uh, people uh, interested in prime number theory around him. Ramanujan loved to evaluate integrals. Uh, here is one uh, integral evaluation uh, from that first letter. So these are actually quotients here. And Ramanujan actually never used the usual quotient sign for uh, a product. Usually you just wrote things out as we see here. And we have this very nice evaluation in terms of the gamma function. And let me give you one more example of um, an integral. So Ramanujan uh, defined P of N by this integral involving cosine exponential. To write this very nice uh, formula involving phi and the corresponding integral with the cosine replaced by a sine. The very nice uh, formula. He says that phi of n is a complicated function and he however evaluated as you can see for several values uh, of phi. Uh, as far as I know there isn't any really nice closed form uh, representation of phi. I'll pose this as a problem. If you would like to, uh, maybe you can find uh, such a nice representat representation. So Hardy encouraged Ramanujan to come to England so that his talents could be developed. Uh, it was difficult for Ramanujan to accept such an invitation. Uh, his family, in particular his mother, was against him going to England. Uh, so, Ramanujan in his second letter replying to Hardy uh, gave him another 50 or 60 results. So Hardy again re replied with an invitation to come to England. So finally, uh, Ramanujan relented, got the permission from his family to go to England. So he left for England in 1914. So when he left for England, uh, he exchanged slates uh, with S. Narayana Iyer. So exchanging slates, uh, at, at least at that time, uh, was an indication that the one who proposed the exchange of slates had great respect for that person. So here clearly then Ramanujan had great respect for S. Narayana Iyer for hiring him at the Madras Port Trust Office and uh, working with him on mathematics and supporting him in his uh, writing letters to English mathematicians about his work. 
So Ramanujan became very famous then for the work that he did uh, beginning in 1914, 1915 in England. But already he was not feeling very well. So as you see in this letter that he wrote to a friend, even Vinayaka Rao in Madras, I was not well till the beginning of this term owing to the weather and consequently I couldn't publish anything for about five months. So that was written just about a year after he actually arrived in England. And then uh, by 2017, he was really seriously ill. So this is a quote from a letter that Hardy wrote to the Swedish mathematician Mithag Leffler. You will be sorry to hear that Mr. Ramanujan is seriously ill and that we are very much alarmed about him. So Ramanujan was elected to the Royal Society on the February 18th, 1918. So I had mentioned this uh, election a few moments ago uh, and in connection with the photograph of Ramanujan after being elected. So these are the members of the Royal Society who elected him. The, the three in uh, italics here were not at the meeting when he was elected, but voted absentee with an absentee ballot, so to speak. And you will note that two of the people uh, that had elected Ramanujan to the Royal Society were Hobson and Baker, the people who didn't respond to Ramanujan's letters uh, back in 1913. So about four months before Ramanujan departed for India after World War I ended, Hardy wrote to the registrar at the University of Madras, there is at last, I am profoundly glad to say a quite definite change for the better. I think we may now hope that he has turned the corner and is on the road to a real recovery. His temperature has ceased to be irregular he has gained nearly a stone in weight. The consensus of medical opinion is that he has been suffering from some obscure and only partially diagnosed source of blood poisoning, which is now dried up. So unfortunately, this letter did not uh, turn out to be true. Ramanujan's health deteriorated, and this uh, diagnosis also didn't seem to be correct. At first, Ramanujan was diagnosed with tuberculosis or uh, um, irregularities in his diet because he could not get proper food uh, from India. So I think all of these diagnoses were incorrect. Uh, an English physician many years later by the name of Young, D.A.B. Young, made a careful analysis of all the records and descriptions of Ramanujan's illness that he could find. And he concluded that Ramanujan died of uh, dysentery. So he thinks that Ramanujan actually, from past records, had two bouts of dysentery in um, India before he departed for England. So Young said that if uh, one has dysentery, one could have then the amoeba living in your large intestinal area and maybe not bother you for a long time. But if your life is disturbed or changed in some way, uh, as Ramanujan certainly was when he went to a colder climate, then the amoeba could act up and then eventually uh, kill you. So he, th he thinks that uh, this is actually how Ramanujan died from two bouts of dysentery that remained dormant for a while, but then arose again and uh, uh, killed him. So after Ramanujan died on April 26th in 1920, it was um, urged that his papers and notebooks uh, be published. So his collected papers were not published until 1927 
And unfortunately, his notebooks uh, were not published at the time. The London Mathematical Society evidently was not in good financial condition and didn't publish uh, his notebooks. So here is the title page from his collected papers. And I'm going to ask you a question and I'll give you a few yes, seconds to answer it. So what is unusual about this title page? Okay, well, the answer is, note that B.M. Wilson's name is in slightly larger print than that of G.H. Hardy and P.V. Seshu Iyer. So the reason for this, and this is what Hardy indicated later in his writings, Wilson actually was the one who put everything together uh, in order for the papers to be uh, collected to get together and published. P.V. Seshu Iyer is actually the, the professor that Ramanujan had in his one year of college at Kumbakonam um, before he, as I indicated earlier, uh, had to leave because he didn't pass his exams at the end of the first year. So Wilson was a Cambridge mathematician and he and G.N. Watson agreed to start editing Ramanujan's notebooks. So here is a photograph of Wilson and here is Watson. So Wilson worked on editing Ramanujan's notebooks for about five years. And then he went into the hospital and incurred an infection and unfortunately passed away. And Watson worked on Ramanujan's notebooks and lost notebook about which I'll tell you later for at least 10 years before his interest declined. He actually wrote about 30 papers on Ramanujan's work. So let me uh, tell you about how I became interested in Ramanujan and his, his notebooks. So I'll begin uh, with my uh, graduate school career. So I was a graduate student at the University of Wisconsin and I never had any course in number theory until the third, second semester of my third year at the University of Wisconsin when I took a course in modular forms from Rod Smart. Uh, who later became my uh, thesis advisor. And then uh, in the following semester, the fall semester of my fourth year at the University of Wisconsin, I had a course from Marvin Knopp and analytic number theory and modular fo forms or modular forms and applications to analytic number theory. And it is here that I learned of Ramanujan for the first time. So he proved uh, Ramanujan's congruences for the partition function, and uh, in particular, more generally for uh, powers of five and of seven, if you're familiar uh, with Ramanujan's congruences. Uh, and he also mentioned the circle method of Ramanujan and Hardy. So he was a student of Paul Bateman at the University of Illinois, a well-known analytic number theorist, and he strongly encouraged me to apply to the University of Illinois um, uh, to, for, uh, as an assistant professor. So uh, I did so, but I went to the University of Glasgow for one year. Uh, I should also mention that at the University of Wisconsin, I, though I didn't take any courses from Richard Askey, he has always been a strong influence in my life. Uh, I had a lot of Bessel functions in my thesis and ASCII was the world's leader in special functions, maybe the world's leader of all time in special functions. So he became interested in my work as a graduate student. I regret that I unfortunately didn't have any courses uh, from him while I was a student at Wisconsin. <laughs> So as I indicated, I went to the University of Glasgow for one year as a postdoc. And there my mentor was Robert Rankin. Now Rankin was uh, a student of G.H. Uh, Hardy's life. 
PhD student. And one day I was in his office and we started to talk about Ramanujan. And then he mentioned uh, Ramanujan's notebooks. So this is the first time that I, I had ever heard of them. And he had in his office the photocopy edition of the notebooks that was made by the Tata Institute in 1957. So he offered to loan the notebooks to me, but unfortunately I declined his invitation and did not borrow the notebooks from him. Well, in February of 1967, uh, while I was at the University of Glasgow, I got a letter from Paul Bateman inviting me to uh, assume a professorship at the University of Illinois. I had actually forgotten that I had even applied at the University of Illinois because I really wanted to teach in a small college. I did my undergraduate work in a small college and then planned to return to a small college uh, after I got my PhD. But I decided to uh, accept his offer to come to the University of Illinois. I only planned to come for a few years, but uh, as Professor Ali indicated in the introduction, I stayed for a few more years, in fact, 52 altogether before retiring one year ago. So Paul Bateman was a very influential analytic number theorist and he was head of the department. And if one is head of the department and influential, one often then takes duties maybe assigned to them and assigns them to junior faculty members. So after a couple of years at the University of Illinois, he asked me to referee a couple of papers for him. So they were by Emo Grosswald. And you can see that these papers proved results from Ramanujan's notebooks. So here is a, a photograph of Grosswald. Yeah. And uh, let me give you one of the formulas uh, from the two papers that Grosswald wrote. So if alpha and beta are positive numbers such that their product is pi squared and if n is a positive integer, uh, we have this beautiful relation involving zeta of 2n plus one. This is the Riemann zeta function. Uh, I haven't defined it here on my screen, but uh, zeta of n is the sum of the reciprocals of the um, nth powers of k as k runs from one to infinity. And one of the well-known great results in number theory is a formula for zeta of 2n uh, as a rational multiple of pi to the 2n involving uh, Bernoulli numbers. But the arithmetic nature of zeta 2n plus one is not known. So here we have this beautiful formula uh, involving zeta 2n plus one. Uh, these are Bernoulli numbers on the right-hand side. I might remark that Ramanujan was always very fond of formulas with symmetry in them. So this kind of hypothesis uh, or the product is of the two parameters as pi squared is a familiar kind of hypothesis in Ramanujan's work. So if you take alpha and beta both to be pi, replace n by 2n plus one, uh, you get uh, this formula. This special case is actually due to the Czech mathematician Lerk in 1901. So I really like this identity because it shows that zeta 4n plus three is a rational multiple of pi to the 4n plus three, but there is an error term, so to speak. The error term is a very rapidly convergent series and so what I like to say, and this is of course very unmathematical, is that zeta 4n plus three is almost a rational multiple of pi to the 4n plus three. So the formulas that Grosswald proved are actually uh, from chapter 14 in Ramanujan's second notebook. And here is actually the page from the second notebook where that formula two formulas that I showed you are found. Okay. 
Well, um, let me just say a few words before I say, uh, uh, give you a history of Ramanujan's notebooks. I um, spent my first sabbatical year at the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton. And one day in February of 1974, I was doing some work on transformation formulas for Eisenstein series. And I realized that these formulas that Grosswald had proved in the papers that I had refereed a few years earlier uh, are ones that I could actually prove uh, using my results. So this is a very thrilling uh, feeling that I had that I could prove some of Ramanujan's formulas. So I was very curious to see uh, if there were other results in the notebooks that I could prove. The Institute did not have a copy of the notebooks, but fortunately Princeton University did have the 1957 Tata Institute uh, photocopy of the notebooks. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I checked them out of the uh, library, found a few more formulas I could prove, but then a few thousand others that I couldn't prove. So uh, immediately after I returned uh, from Princeton back in Urbana, I then uh, ordered a copy of the notebooks. And, uh, but I didn't do anything for a couple of years. And then in May of 1977, the semester had just ended at the University of Illinois, I said to myself, well, let's try to prove everything in chapter 14 of the second notebook. So again, this is the chapter in which Grosswald and I had proved some formulas earlier. So I chose that chapter because I would have a course a head start, so to speak. So there are 87 results altogether in chapter 14. So I worked on this for over a year. And then uh, in the fall of 1978, George Andrews visited me at Illinois and told me that when he found the Wass notebook in the spring of 1976 at Trinity College Library in Cambridge, he also saw that the efforts that Watson and Wilson had made to edit Vermontage's notebooks were actually in the library as well. So I thought, uh, well, maybe if I had a copy of these notes, I could edit uh, further uh, chapters in the notebooks. So I went back to the beginning and this is what I did. I uh, gradually went through the notebooks, helped by several of my graduate students. And so I worked on this uh, over a period of over 20 years, uh, proving the results in Ramanujan's notebooks. So, you know, how did the notebooks um, survive or you know, what is their history now? So the, after Ramanujan's death, uh, they were given to the University of uh, Madras and this is where they are now. So in 1923, uh, the registrar at the University of Madras sent to Hardy uh, a large packet of papers of Ramanujan. We don't know exactly what was in this packet, but we do know that uh, the packet contained a handwritten copy of the notebooks. So a librarian or a worker at the University of Madras sat, sat down and made a, one handwritten copy of these notebooks. So those of you who may have some impatience with the photocopying machine uh, just re might remember that back in 1923, the situation was a bit different. So, so it was actually this copy of the notebooks uh, that uh, Hardy, Wilson, and Watson had worked from. Yeah. And um, as I indicated uh, in 1957, the Tata Institute uh, published the notebooks for the first time. So this photograph of the, my copy of the notebooks I just took about a year ago uh, to photograph the notebooks 
I put behind them on our buffet uh, a tapestry that I had been given to me, kindly given to me on one of my trips to India. So in 2012, on the 125th anniversary of Ramanujan's birth, the notebooks were republished. And at that time, it was found that the lamination uh, that was made for the pages of the notebooks was cracking and actually um, contributed to further deterioration. So if I'm told correctly, uh, if I remember correctly, the lamination has now been removed. So uh, the newer version of the notebooks uh, is clearer than the old version, although uh, I must uh, say that when I worked through the notebooks for over 20 years, I usually didn't have any trouble um, reading uh, what Ramanujan had wrote. So let me give you just a few uh, ideas of what one can find in the notebooks. So there are a lot of results uh, in the notebooks on Q series. So let me just introduce standard Q no series notation. So A Q sub N is this product of one minus A Q to the K, K running from zero to N minus one. And if Q is less than one in absolute value, we can let N tend to infinity. So this is the definition of AQ infinity. So Q is here called uh, the base. And if it's constant throughout our discussion or paper, uh, then we usually omit it from the notation. So there is an enormous amount of work in the notebooks on theta functions. So I've given here Ramanujan's definition of a theta function. And again, note the symmetry uh, in the definition. So this is not the classical definition of a theta function uh, that goes back to Jacobi, but it's equivalent to the classical definition. So for many purposes, the classical representation due to Jacobi and others is useful, but for Ramanujan's purposes, this notation is more useful. So this is the Jacobi triple product representation of the theta function. So in his notebooks, Ramanujan derived all the results in the classical theory of theta functions, but he derived many, many new results as well. So the three most prominent theta functions are phi of q, these are all in Ramanujan's notation, uh, f of q, q, and psi of q, f of q, q cubed, so what I have done here is actually um, put the negative index terms and written them with the positive index terms. So this is what it turns out. And then in Ramanujan's notation, f of minus q, which is f of minus q minus q squared. And again, I folded up the negative index terms with the positive index terms. So this is simply q, q sub infinity. The reciprocal of this is the generating function for the partition function P of N. And these are the pentagonal numbers. <clears throat> so I might mention that Ramanujan never used this notation. He always just wrote the first few terms of a product and then possibly the last if we have a finite product. He didn't, as I indicated, use any of the standard notation for theta functions. So theta functions are part of the theory of elliptic functions, but Ramanujan did not use any of the standard notation for elliptic functions. So his theory of elliptic functions was derived independently of any knowledge of uh, the theory, the classical theory of elliptic functions. So let me just say a few words about elliptic functions and modular equations just because modular equations were very uh, much a focus of Ramanujan's work in the notebooks. So this number k here between zero and one is called the modulus. The complete elliptic integral of the first guy cap k of k is defined in this way. So if you take the integrand and expand it in a, a binomial series using the binomial expansion, you'll get this infinite series. 
So now this is sort of a conflict in notation. Uh, a sub n uh, is now this rising or shifted factorial. So don't confuse this notation with the previous a sub n that I gave you for uh, the in the product notation. So this is also uh, this is a hypergeometric function. And the complementary modulus uh, k prime is the square root of one minus k squared. Okay, so now I'm going to give you a definition of a modular equation. For those of you not familiar with modular equations, you uh, might find this uh, without uh, interest or without motivation, but uh, unfortunately I, I have to uh, omit all the motivation and reason uh, for this definition. So we have four complete elliptic integrals, k, k prime, l, and l prime. So the prime indicates that it's the complete elliptic integral associated with the uh, complementary modulus. So the moduli are k, k prime, l, and l prime. So we suppose we have a positive integer n and an equality between these elliptic integrals. Then a modular equation of degree n is a relation between the moduli k and l, which is induced by this equality. So in fact, Ramanujan never used uh, complete elliptic integrals in his yeah, we'll definition. He actually expressed this in terms of hypergeometric functions. And he used this kind of notation, alpha equals k squared, beta equals l squared. So uh, this would be the way Ramanujan would define a modular equation. So Ramanujan loved modular equations. I've given here three examples, uh, one of degree three, uh, one of five and seven. So you note the beautiful symmetry that we have in these modular equations. <clears throat> Ramanujan uh, derived about a dozen modular equations of each of these degrees. And in fact, all together, he has about between 100 and 200 modular equations in his notebooks uh, for over 30 different degrees. There are modular equations also, which I haven't defined for um, four degrees or four moduli in them. So these modular equations were really a uh, focus of Ramanujan's work. And when you look at the modular equations of say degree three, you will not find them repeated anywhere else. So in other words, if you have a modular equation, let's say of a prime degree, it will not appear for any other primes. These modular equations are unique. So I might tell you just briefly of a recent result due to my former student, Sun Kim. She proved uh, a Q product uh, identity involving three different quotients of Q products. And from this identity, she was able to derive five different modular equations for five different degrees. So these modular equations I emphasize were all different but it is remarkable that she could actually get so many modular equations from one general formula. So let me just summarize uh, briefly about then some of the topics, main topics in the notebooks. There are lots of identities involving infinite series, many results, as I said, on theta functions and more generally elliptic functions. Many new results, as well as classical results on hypergeometric series. And um, basic hypergeometric series are, so to speak, the Q analogs of hypergeometric series. And there's a lot of number theory uh, in the notebooks. So I haven't indicated everything in the notebooks, but uh, these are five general areas of mathematics that one can find in the notebooks. So now let me turn my attention to the lost notebook. So I'd like to reinterpret uh, these famous words from the Bhagavad Gita. Through long lapse of time, 
So the time being from 1920 when Ramanujan died to 1976 when Andrews found the lost notebook. The knowledge that was lost was the lost notebook. But now as you are devoted to truth, George Andrews, I will reveal the supreme secret, which is Ramanujan's lost notebook. So Ramanujan's lost notebook was discovered in the spring of 1976 in the library of Trinity College, Cambridge. So while visiting uh, Cambridge, Lucy Slater, Dr. Lucy Slater uh, in this photograph encouraged Andrews to go to the library and sort through the papers of the late G.N. Watson, um, hoping we might find of something interest to him there. So in this photograph, uh, this is uh, George Andrews' daughter, Amy, and this is Katie. So while he was uh, sorting through these papers of Watson, he found a large manuscript of, uh, in Ramanujan's handwriting, which was clearly from the last year of Ramanujan's life. So, Ramanujan wrote to Hardy only once after returning to India in 1919. And in this one letter, he described his new um, findings on mock data functions. Andrews was very familiar with this letter. He had actually uh, written his PhD thesis on Ramanujan's work. So he noticed, he re realized immediately this was Ramanujan's work and from the last uh, year of his life. So this manuscript is very rough. Again, there are no proofs, just like in the earlier notebooks. And they're disorganized and sometimes difficult to read. So here is one page from the lost notebook. Here is another page, which is very difficult to read. The piece of paper was probably a piece, piece of thin parchment paper. So when the lost notebook was eventually published in 1988, uh, the photographer was really photographing two sides of the uh, page here. So the big question is, how did this manuscript, the lost notebook reach Trinity College Library? So I think we can actually piece together what happened. So I mentioned earlier that in 1923, uh, the registrar at the University of Madras sent to Hardy a large shipment of papers, including a handwritten copy of Ramon's earlier notebooks. Unfortunately, the registrar did not uh, make a list of what was in this package, and Hardy also did not make a list of what was in the package. The registrar in his letter to Hardy said that he should return these papers uh, when convenient. Uh, Hardy never returned the papers uh, to the registrar. So uh, almost certainly then what we now call the lost notebook was in this shipment of papers and was in Hardy's possession for many years. And then he gave it uh, to G.N. Watson. We don't know when, he he gave this manuscript to Watson. Uh, we think it was in the late 1930s. And the reason we think that is that uh, Watson wrote uh, papers, uh, several papers on Ramanujan's uh, mock theta functions. And in one of his papers in 1936, he said, I'm surprised that Ramanujan didn't discover this third order mock theta function. Well, if he had had uh, this manuscript of the lost notebook, he would have seen, in fact, that Ramanujan had discovered this mock theta function. So probably then after 1936, and of course, before Hardy died in 1947, uh, he passed on to Watson the, this material uh, of Ramanujan. So not only was there a lost notebook, uh, in this package of material that the registrar sent, 
uh, but many other papers, uh, as I'll indicate in a few minutes uh, as well. So Watson uh, had this uh, in his possession. Uh, he died in 1965 uh, after being professor, Mason professor of mathematics at the University of Birmingham uh, for several years. So after he died, uh, Mrs. Watson was visited by Robert Rankin, whom I mentioned earlier. Uh, Rankin was actually the successor of Watson as professor of mathematics at the University of Birmingham. But when the professorship opened up at the University of Glasgow, uh, being a Scotsman, Rankin assumed this position. So he visited Mrs. Watson and uh, they discussed what to do with all of the papers that were on the floor of Watson's attic floor office. So Watson had been a fellow at Trinity College, Cambridge, and had uh, been fond always of Trinity College. So it was agreed that uh, Rankin would sort through all of these papers and those that were worth preserving be sent to Trinity College. So over a period of three years, uh, Rankin made trips to Birmingham to sort through the papers. And on one of his trips, he found uh, a large amount of material uh, uh, due to a remonogen. And J.M. Whitaker uh, also visited Mrs. Watson and, and another uh, visit to Watson's attic floor office uh, found uh, some more remonogen material. So this material was actually sent to Trinity College, Cambridge uh, in December of 1968. So remember that I mentioned earlier that uh, I was a postdoc at the University of Glasgow for one year. So it was, it, this one year was actually during the period that Rankin was taking trips to Birmingham, sorting through Watson's papers. And I very much regret that I don't recall if Rankin ever told me uh, that he was doing this or not. The only thing I can remember uh, from our conversation was that he informed me of Ramanujan's notebooks for the first time. Yeah. So we think uh, this is how then Ramanujan's lost notebook reached Trinity College. So it really wasn't lost and because it really was known to Rankin and of course the librarians. It really wasn't the notebook either. It was just a sheaf of papers. So Rankin didn't uh, like the fact that it was called Ramanujan's Lost Notebook because it really wasn't lost and it really wasn't a notebook. But if I were Andrews, I would have done the, the same thing and called it Ramanujan's Lost Notebook. So let me just say a few words about uh, results that one can find in the Lost Notebook. Again, there are many results on Q series. So I've redefined A Q sub N here. So often Q series have analogous oh, results in the theory of hypergeometric series. So let me just yeah, briefly indicate uh, why such analogy might exist. So if you take uh, A, and replace it by Q to the A, then you have Q to the A, over, uh, semicolon Q. We'll divide it by one minus Q to the N, separate this into N terms and quotients, apply L'Hopital's rule to each, and you get then the rising factorial, which I'll now use uh, and put in a different notation. Yeah. So a lot of the results uh, in Hypergeometric function theory have analogs in the theory of Q series. So this is the Q binomial theorem. Uh, if you replace A by Q to the A, as I did earlier, where A is a positive integer, now I'll let Q tend to one. Here, you, what you get is this familiar uh, binomial series. So that is one over one minus Z to the A power. 
So it, there are lots of results in the notebook, lost notebook on Q series. So there are also a number of results on what are called false theta functions. So a false theta function is a theta function, but you change the signs of infinitely many terms. So if you take psi of Q, which I defined earlier as the sum of Q to the n n plus one over two from zero to infinity, and now we'll put in the minus one to the n, we have a false theta function because we've changed the sign of half of the terms. A partial theta function is a theta function, but we don't have all the terms there. So here is a partial theta function. For a theta function, you would have the sum from minus infinity to infinity. Here's an identity for this partial theta function from the lost notebook. So let me just briefly uh, describe Ramanujan's last letter or part of Ramanujan's last letter to Hardy um, because uh, it is where Ramanujan discussed uh, his results on mock theta functions. Um, so this is a bit more technical, uh, but uh, I'll, I'll just briefly go through this. Now. So uh, this is actually a representation for one over Q, Q sub infinity. So what Ramanujan does is uh, he lets Q be e to the minus T and lets T tend to zero. So this series only converges for Q less than one in absolute value. So he's letting Q tend to the boundary of the circle of convergence. And he gets this beautiful asymptotic formula as T tends to zero. So this little o of one term is uh, defined as follows. If you have some function which is little o of one, as x tends to a, a often being infinity, uh, then uh, the limit of f of x as x tends to a is zero. So this is just a shorthand way of, of writing this. So as I indicated, this is a reciprocal of a theta function, f of minus q. So then Ramanujan asks, is the converse true? That is, suppose we have a result of th this type. Does it really come from a theta function? And he says here, not necessarily so. So when it doesn't come from a theta function, he calls it a mock theta function. So here is, is an example. So all I've done in the previous uh, definition is to replace this Q by minus Q. And um, unfortunately, this is a conflict of notation here, but I'm just following what Ramanujan said in his last letter to Hardy. Uh, so this is not what I called F of minus Q before, but uh, this F of Q is this mock theta function. So then in his letter, he said, he gives this type, it's a little bit different formulation, because this exponential is on the left-hand side. Um, and uh, so this is uh, an asymptotic formula for this, for this mock theta function as t tends to zero. Now, so this is a third order mock theta function. He gives mock theta functions of three other orders as well. He never really defines the uh, order of a mock theta function. So mock theta functions have been a, an enormous source of research in the last two or three decades. They have been put in a much more general setting called mock modular forms and uh, have um, many, many applications. And one could give many lectures on these uh, developments. Um, Ken Ono and George Andrews would be able to uh, lecture on these uh, developments much more uh, readily than I could. One can uh, generalize the definition of uh, AQ sub n to negative integers. So if n is any integer, uh, we define AQ sub n in this way. So if n is a positive integer, you can check that this reduces to the previous definition. One of the most famous results of Ramanujan is his one psi one summation. So again, these are a sub n in this more general form. So for this sum, we have this 
a quotient of eight different uh, products there. So I don't have the time. So uh, Professor Ali, if I reach uh, uh, one hour, uh, please tell me that I should. Uh, uh, you, 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 know. you may please continue if you like. Oh, okay, yeah, so yeah, sure. please stop me if you would like me to bring my lecture to an end. Uh, so this yeah. is a very famous result and uh, it's used many, many times in Q-series. So um, also in Ramanujan's Lost Notebook, there are many results on Eisenstein series. These are connected often by Ramanujan with the partition function. So these are the three basic Eisenstein series. Uh, in the theory of modular forms, if Q is e to the minus two pi i tau, tau being in the upper half plane, um, in the modular form notation, these are e4 and e6. So published with Ramanujan's Lost Notebook in 1988, there are many results or many manuscripts of Ramanujan, just partial manuscripts, uh, papers he started to write, maybe just jottings. And Watson actually made handwritten copies of some of these. And this is a list of the uh, manuscripts of Ramanujan in Watson's uh, writing. And unfortunately, we do not have Ramanujan's original uh, copies or the original uh, manuscripts. So these are all in Watson's handwriting. Yeah. So uh, these contain many famous results. Uh, probably the most famous uh, results are the 40 identities for the Rogers Ramanujan functions, which I haven't had time to define, and a large manuscript, a very influential manuscript on the partition function and the Ramanujan tau function, which again, I just haven't had time to, to discuss. So all of these are uh, published with Ramanujan's notebooks along with many other manuscripts. Uh, in the 1988 publication. So in the five books that George Andrews and I have written on the Lost Notebook, we cover all of this material. Yeah. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, Watson wrote uh, a paper on Ramanujan's last letter and he called this the final problem, <clears throat> excuse me, on account of the mock theta functions. So the title of his paper, The Final Problem, comes from The Adventure of the Final Problem. This is probably the most famous of Sherlock Holmes stories written by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. And it is actually his 24th and final short story about uh, Sherlock Holmes. And Dr. Watson was Sherlock Holmes' sidekick during all of these stories. So two reasons then, at least for the choice of the title for Watson's paper. The final problem being the last uh, results of Ramanujan before he died on mock data functions. And uh, Watson himself really was in, or his namesake was always uh, a sidekick of Sherlock Holmes. So I'd like to tell you about the last result that uh, was proven by I, Andrews and myself uh, from the Lost Notebook. This is actually not in the real, the Lost Notebook, but one of the manuscripts published with the Lost Notebook. So it's connected with a very famous open problem in number theory called the Dirichlet divisor problem. And it actually goes back to the first letter that Ramanujan wrote to Hardy. So in that letter, Ramanujan uh, gives actually the, the following. So D of N is the number of divisors of the positive integer N. So the problem is to estimate the sum of D of N is in as n less than or equal to x as x tends to infinity. 
So this is a first approximation. And this is actually in Ramanujan's first letter to Hardy. Uh, gamma is Euler's constant. So uh, delta of x is the error term made in this approximation. So you might guess or ask, well, why is this one quarter here? Why can't we just stick this in the error term? And the answer is that uh, there is a representation for the sum d of x. Uh, and in this representation, this one quarter just sort of appears naturally. So it's sort of, so to speak, harmless. So the prime indicates that if uh, x is an integer, we only count half of the terms here. So you might ask, well, why is, do, we, do we do this? Why do we only count half of the terms if x is an integer? Well, again, uh, if uh, in this representation we have a d of x, it, this is the natural sum that arises then. So um, Dirichlet was the first person to examine this uh, problem, as you might guess from the name of the problem. And he showed that as x tends to infinity, this error term is big O of square root of x. So in other words, there exists a constant C such that for, um, in a constant, let's say x zero, such that for x greater than or equal to x zero, all x greater than or equal to x zero, the error term is less than a constant times the square root of x. So you can think of this in terms of lattice points. So if d is a divisor of n, we'll let j be n over d. So every divisor of n can be associated with a lattice point j in the first quadrant. So these lattice points then all lie under the hyperbola, let's say a, b equals x. So what we're doing when we're trying to estimate d of x is we're trying to count then the number of lattice points under or on the hyperbola a, b equals x. So again, this is an equivalent formulation for the divisor problem. So there's an elementary way of writing d of x. So you can think of it as just summing ones over all pairs dj less than or equal to x. So you get a one for every pair dj. If we sum on j first, then of course the sum was just the square brackets of x over d, square brackets being the greatest integer function. So I'll mention this for a reason which I'll give you in a couple minutes. So again, finding the, an estimate for the error term in the Dirichlet divisor function uh, problem is the same as counting all the lattice points under the curve a, b equals x. And to get the estimate that Dirichlet and Ramanujan had, what you do is to count all the lattice points in regions one and two, all the ones in one and three, which would be the same, and then subtract off those in region one that you counted twice. Okay, I'm going to go through this very hurriedly. Uh, it's a bit technical. So these are definitions of Bessel functions here. So J nu is the ordinary Bessel function. Uh, and y nu is a Bessel function defined in terms of j nu. K nu is another Bessel function defined in terms of j. Yeah. So you can then represent the sum of d of n, n less than or equal to x in the following way. So this is what I gave you before. And then I had delta of x, the error term. Well, that delta of x, can be represented now as this infinite series. And this, these i's, i1 here, is uh, this linear combination of these Bessel functions. Yeah. So um, again, we have this representation for the error term. And in the century or so of progress that has been made on estimating this error term, what is done is to approximate the Bessel functions by trigonometric functions 
and then estimating trigonometric series. So we are far from uh, what we think is the error term of the, uh, in the Derek Lay divisor problem, mainly because we don't know how to estimate this series properly. So now let me give you uh, uh, a claim that Ramanujan wrote in a partial manuscript published with the Lost Notebook. So he defines f of x to be the greatest integer function if x is not an integer, but x minus a half if x is an integer. So note, this is sort of what uh, we have in the sum which I gave you before. If x is not an integer, we subtract off a half. So here is Ramanujan's formula. It's on page 335 in the publication of the Lost Notebook. Okay, so f of x is that function which I just gave. And here we have a double series of Bessel functions and we have another variable, theta. So if theta is equal to zero, then by this elementary calculation that I just gave you, this reduces to just the square brackets of x over n. So this is a generalization then of the function d of x, the sum of d of n and less than or equal to x. But now in this generalization, we have a double series of Bessel functions. So generally in analytic number theory, if you can introduce another parameter, you might be able to work with that parameter uh, in some way so that you can then, when you specialize the parameter, get uh, a new result, something that you we're aiming at. So I think, but I certainly don't know this, that Ramanujan derived this formula to work on the Dirac Lay divisor problem. He maybe had some idea how to use this formula to estimate the error term. However, uh, no one has been able to ever use this formula on the error term. Uh, I've, I worked on this problem for uh, 15 years or so, uh, trying to use this formula. Oh. So this is a very difficult formula to prove. <laughs> you know what that happened? A few remarks on the formula. <laughs> so it was uh, first proved uh, with the order of summation reversed by myself, Sun Kim, who I mentioned earlier, and my colleague, Alexander Zarescu. So what we did is to invert the order of summation in the double series, we assume the convergence for one value of theta, and then we prove the identity for all values of theta. And then we prove the identity in another way. We prove the identity when the product mn tends to infinity. So not as an iterated sum, but as a sum where the product tends to infinity. So I emphasize, these are different from the way Ramanujan actually stated the theorem. So this last way is a bit easier than proving the result in the first uh, way. So finally, just in the last year or so, we prove this identity as originally recorded by Ramanujan. So we think that this is the last result that was yeah. in the lost notebook. And uh, our um, result so that Zarez by Fruit and Junshi and Li uh, it was just published recently in this paper in the Proceedings of the London Math Society. So, um, as I've emphasized, I think this is the last result to prove that was to be proved in the Lost Notebook. <clears throat> but let me give you. Uh, maybe a contradiction to what I just said. So Ramanujan loved uh, exact evaluations. So in particular, yeah, he evaluated theta functions at various values of the argument. So phi uh, of q is our basic theta function, sum of q to the n squared. So here's the value of q, q to the e to, my, e to the minus pi. This is actually classical and not difficult to prove. So Ramanujan had a number of evaluations of this type here. 
where the seven might be replaced by three, five, or some other small prime. So here we have this beautiful evaluation of Ramanujan, then for phi of e to the minus seven pi. So I've written it this way. So the result, the gamma function and the pi powers are, are not uh, on the right-hand side. So a beautiful evaluation. So we don't know many of these at all. Uh, maybe, so we can replace the seven by any power of two, uh, both positive and negative, but for very few other results, do we have exact evaluations? Well, on page 206 in his lost notebook, so this is actually in the original lost notebook that Andrews found, we have this formula here. So note, we don't have minus seven pi, but minus seven pi square root of seven. So I don't know of any results of this type. But note what we have on the right hand side. Ramanujan does not give us what these three quantities are. So there's no identification of the missing terms and we have never been able to figure out what these missing terms are. So I first saw this result in the not lost notebook about 15 years ago, and I never was able to determine uh, what these terms were. Uh, a Hungarian mathematician a few months ago uh, found this result and wrote me about it. So he and I have been thinking about, about it for the last few months, but we have really nothing to report. So there are some results prior to this where Ramanujan says, for example, but we have not been able to use these results at all in order to uh, clarify uh, what Ramanujan was thinking here. So I leave this uh, problem for you uh, to think about uh, if you want something difficult to think about uh, that Ramanujan did. Let me just make a few remarks uh, about Ramanujan's papers. Um, Janaki, Ramanujan's widow, told me that when he returned from England, he had a trunk full of papers. But we have, of course, nothing approximating a trunk full of papers. Uh, evidently, much of Ramanujan's work has been lost from this trunk of papers. I might mention that two pages of Ramanujan's first letter to Hardy have been lost. And a portion of Ramanujan's last letter to Hardy has been lost as well. And we really don't know the content of the shipment of papers that was sent to Hardy from the University of Madras in 1923. Uh, it could be that there are other papers that, that have been lost as well. But I'd like to emphasize if it weren't for Robert Rankin's visit to Mrs. Watson after her husband's died, Ramanujan's lost notebook really would have been lost. It probably would have been uh, destroyed. So we owe a huge debt uh, to Robert Rankin for saving the lost notebook. Well, I began uh, my lecture uh, with words from Chandra Sekar. Uh, in his banquet speech that he gave at the meeting at the University of Illinois on June 1st through the 5th of 1987. So I'd like to conclude my lecture uh, with uh, a few words from Freeman Dyson's lecture that he gave at this meeting. So the beginning sentence is as follows. I am grateful to the organizers of this conference for bringing me here and giving me a chance to enjoy all the new flowers that have been growing in recent years in Ramanujan's garden. And then he concluded his lecture with the following. Whenever I am angry or depressed, I pull down the collected papers from the shelf and take a quiet stroll in Ramanujan's garden. I recommend this therapy to all of you who suffer from headaches or jangled nerves. And Ramanujan's papers are not only a good therapy for headaches, they also are full of beautiful mathematics, 
which may help you do more interesting mathematics. So in these troubled times due to the virus and uncertain political situations in many countries, and if you want to learn more beautiful mathematics, we should follow uh, Freeman Dyson's advice. So thank you very much for inviting me to give this lecture to you. I'll be glad to take any questions. Thank you, Professor uh, Bruce. Yeah, uh, uh, there are two or three questions uh, people have posted in uh, uh, chat. Uh, the first question is, are there any application of ramanujan Nagel equation other than its appearance in error correcting codes and differential algebra? So any applications of what did you say? Applications of what? Uh, he says, uh, are there any applications of Ramanujan's Nagel equations other oh. than its appearance in error correcting codes and differential algebra? Okay, I actually don't know much about the applications that you mentioned but there are applications of his modular equations. And um, they, many of them have partition theoretic interpretations. And they're really be very beautiful uh, partition theoretic interpretations. And I have worked on uh, some of these with uh, uh, Nayandeep Barua at Tezpur. And um, so, uh, um, I didn't have time, unfortunately, to give you these partition theoretic interpretations, but they are very, really very beautiful uh, interpretations of the modular equations of some of Ramanujan's modular equations. Another participant asked uh, uh, your uh, comment and some explanation of on uh, famous Ramanujan's death puzzle related to black holes. Uh, no, I don't know anything about this. Uh, so, but these uh, are applications of uh, the Ramanujan's Mach, Mach theta functions to black holes and string theory. Uh, I may I've been told about these applications, but you know, not being a, a physicist, uh, I can't really explain them uh, to you. <laughs> Another participant, uh, it's a very general question. Uh, he wants to know. Can you hear me, sir? I can hear you, yes. Okay, okay, sir. There is another participant, it's a very general question, and he wants to know uh, how Ramanujan's interest turned into partition theory. Okay. Well, that's a, a good question. Um, I, I, I really can't, uh, I don't know that for sure. Um, it's, um, you know, if you look at, uh, so it really falls out of Q series. So it, it's sort of, it's natural because if you just look at the reciprocal of one over Q, Q sub infinity, that's the generating function uh, for, uh, the partition function. And so uh, that was easily described. Uh, so then what Ramanujan did was to naturally calculate uh, some of these uh, values for the partition function. And then he had the amazing ability to notice that there were patterns in some of the coefficients. So beginning with four, if you add any multiple to four, he saw that that number of partitions was also divisible by five. And the same way, if you take the number of partitions of five and then add uh, and, uh, five, any, any uh, multiple of seven, that is 12, 19, etc., the number of partitions of these integers is divisible by seven then. So he was, uh, his ability to see things from calculations led him to the congruences uh, for the partition function. 
And then uh, uh, these congruences can be proved uh, in the three or four different ways. They were proved by Ramanujan in different ways, all using ideas from Q series. So in particular, he used uh, results in Eisenstein series to uh, prove uh, results, congruences for the partition function. And then he saw, well, these uh, congruences uh, could be generalized. His methods could actually be used to prove congruences modulo not only five, but 25, uh, 125, et cetera. So uh, there are now general congruences, which he conjectured for any power five, any power seven, any power 11. He only had proofs for small uh, powers of, of each of these uh, at the time. But then at the, towards the end of his day, he actually developed uh, proofs for any power of five and seven. So, so um, it's just his insight that he was able to make just from uh, calculations and uh, working with uh, Q series uh, that led him to these famous results. So, uh, Professor Bhargava wants uh, you to uh, say a few words about uh, uh, forthcoming Ramanujan's encyclopedia. So, um, five years ago, uh, Springer, which uh, published my five books on the earlier notebooks and the five books I wrote with Andrews on the lost notebook, uh, made the proposition to uh, Krishna Swami Alati, George Andrews, and Ken Ono, and myself to form a, an encyclopedia uh, of um, things connected with Ramanujan. So originally they projected 600 pages, and now they said we should have an encyclopedia of a thousand pages or more. So in this encyclopedia, uh, what was uh, ask us, what Springer asked us to do was to give articles from one to six pages long of every aspect of Ramanujan's uh, life and work. So in other words, articles on uh, Ramanujan's life, people connected with Ramanujan's life, for example, his mother and his wife Janaki and S. Narayana Iyer, and then on his mathematics, and then on mathematics generated, uh, contemporary mathematics, which you know has its basis or foundations in Ramanujan's work, and then contemporary mathematicians uh, whose work has been strongly influenced by Ramanujan. So roughly, uh, so to speak, these are the four areas of, uh, uh, connected with Ramanujan's uh, uh, and his work that we hope to cover in the encyclopedia. So the original projection was about 250 articles. Yeah. So unfortunately, this has been very s slow progress. Um, uh, Andrews, Ono, Alati, and myself um, are, you might say, busy mathematicians, and we haven't been able to devote as much time to this project uh, as we wish. And in the last couple of years, since uh, George Andrews and I published our lost, our fifth book on Ramanujan's lost notebook, uh, I've been able to actually uh, devote more time to, to this project and write several uh, articles for the Ramanujan Encyclopedia. So just a couple of weeks ago, uh, the woman, uh, Juby George, who's collecting all these manuscripts for us in, in Delhi, uh, we asked her, uh, how many uh, have you received so far from us? And she said 106 articles. So we have a long uh, ways to, uh, to go. And um, we are looking for people to write uh, articles uh, for the encyclopedia. And uh, uh, Bhargava at, Mar at Mysore has written a few articles for us 
and Barua, uh, whom I mentioned at uh, Tezpur, is uh, writing another one on uh, the partition theoretic implications of Ramanujan's modular equations. Uh, Gaurav Bhatnagar uh, in Delhi is uh, uh, written and is going to write a, a few papers for us on the encyclopedia, or a few articles for on the encyclo for the encyclopedia. So um, we are looking for uh, writers. Uh, that's unfortunately too large of a uh, project for the four of us. And we have recently added four further editors to help us. Uh, the four further editors are Isai, uh, who is a professor at uh, Penn State. She was a postdoc uh, with me uh, from 2000 to 2003. And many of the earlier papers that I wrote on the Lost Notebook were, were co-authored with her. Uh, Frank Garvin at the University of Florida, who's Partitions. Ole Barnard. Paula and Linz. So hopefully we'll be able to make more progress in the next. Any further questions? Yeah, Professor Ben. Uh, one of the participants wants to know, do we have inversion formula involving mock theta functions? Any what? A conversion? Any in, inversion formula. Oh, inversion formulas for yeah. mock theta functions. Um, that's a good question. I don't know of any. Um, so I'm not sure what the inversion formula would actually look like. Um, so what um, Zwegers did in his thesis was actually to, so to speak, complete the Mach theta function by uh, adding to the Mach theta function a certain term to get a modular form. But this is not an inversion formula. So yeah, I really don't know of anything uh, in this direction. There is a very general question. Uh, one uh, participant has uh, 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 Jagdeep, uh, Jagdeep Singh. Uh, can you can you mute yourself? Your audio is disturbing a lot. Uh, it's a very general question, Professor Bruce. Uh, one participant wants to know that you mentioned about Ramanujan's love for symmetry of an equation or a formula. Mm -hmm. So the participants wants to know, does this uh, thing make a formula or an equation more effective? Uh, it may be. Uh, so uh, what I um, mentioned, uh, Ramanujan's definition of a theta function uh, it, th it was this definition that really made it possible for him to discover many new properties and formulas involving theta functions. Uh, in particular, uh, formulas useful in the theory of partitions. So I can't imagine that uh, with Jacobi's representation of theta functions and that theory, that any of these things would have been discovered. So uh, that definition was really crucial in uh, Ramanujan's development of much of his theory of theta functions, elliptic functions, modular equations, theory of partitions, and the Ramanujan tau function. Really a, uh, a critical uh, reformulation of a classical definition. Okay. So one of the participants know, wants to know uh, about one, of, one result, whether it is correct or not. And uh, this is, in fact, a series, minus 1 plus 2 plus 3, and so on. Uh, the sum is minus 1 by 12. Yes, yeah, so that was uh, uh, Ramanujan's way of giving the value of zeta of minus 1. So in other words, uh, um, or zeta minus, yeah, 
Uh, so that really is the value of the minus one twelfth is the value of the Riemann zeta function. But Ramanujan liked to express this in this very unusual way in terms of a, a divergent series. So that, that's just, uh, you know, the, the Riemann zeta function at minus one. So. In other words, it's minus a 12. Yeah. I mean, the same participant who was asking about the inversion formula, he wants to know about the duplication formula for mock theta function. Does it exist? Oh, I don't know of any duplication formulas for mock theta functions. Yeah. So I, think, I think there is no more question. Uh, one, uh, one question, sir, I would like to ask, and uh, if you make an, a comment, you, you mentioned about uh, uh, 1936 uh, paper of Watson, final account, and uh, the last letter of uh, Ramanujan to Hardy, in which he mentioned about the 17 functions in which uh, there were four third order functions. But uh, in uh, uh, Watson's paper, he mentioned, uh, uh, he gave seven functions, and for three functions he wrote, for the obvious reason, they are the third order mark theta function. And then later they were found in the uh, uh, lost notebook, those three third order mock theta functions. So uh, any idea how Watson uh, got to know about these functions? Uh, the answer is no. And some people think that uh, Watson was maybe not being honest uh, that he- I mean, really he, had, he had an access to uh, those uh, paper. Yes, he, yes, yes he did. On record. Um, uh, uh, so, uh, in Dyson's lecture uh, in on June 2nd, 1987, after the opening sentence, which I gave you, he said that for many years, Watson was in charge of Ramanujan's garden. But he was the kind of person uh, who will let, wouldn't let you in the garden. Uh, you had to see the garden from a distance. And then he went on to say that uh, Andrews is not, not different. He's glad to have people walking in Ramanujan's garden. So Watson often, or in some of his papers, I don't think gave Ramanujan enough credit. And so it's possible that uh, when in the last um, paper that Ramon, that Watson wrote, uh, problem, yeah, uh, he might have forgotten uh, that uh, this really was in Ramanujan's, you know. Uh, Please participant mute yourself. It's disturbing a lot. Mr. Manohar, please mute yourself. It is your voice is taking over. Yes, Professor, uh, Professor Bruce, you can go ahead. Oh, yeah. So, um, so, yeah. So, in the work that Watson, I'm, I'm not really. I haven't read the Watson's paper for a long time, but. I think what he did was was fairly natural to discover the the uh, these uh, mock theta functions that he said were not in Ramanujan's uh, work. It, yeah, so yeah, it's. I think uh, it was natural for, in view of all the other things that Ramanujan had in his last letter uh, and in the lost notebook uh, to discover these so-called new functions. But it could be that he really had seen them in Ramanujan's uh, work and uh, had forgotten about them uh, and just thought maybe this was his own discovery. There are other instances in Watson's paper where he did similar, made similar comments. This wasn't the first one. Yeah. Well, there are, so, some of us feel that Watson was maybe hiding things and uh, not uh, really giving Ramanujan enough credit. And um, yeah, and this, this is what Dyson also 
sort of was indicating in his lecture here at the University of Illinois. Didn't let Ramanujan's garden be um, viewed by many people. Do you have any hope of uh, any uh, new definition of mob theta function? Uh, yeah, I'm not an expert on this, so I, I, I can't really say for sure. But when you take uh, Ramanujan's so-called definition of a mock theta function, one really can't prove that these are really mock theta functions third, fifth, seventh, or tenth order itself. So in other words, um, we can make a definition of a mock theta function, but it's actually a bit different than what Ramanujan was telling us. Right. So in some sense, if we just take what Ramanujan wrote, we really don't have any proofs that these functions are exactly what uh, Ramanujan had for his hypotheses. So we can expect we can expect some definition in this. Oh, so in other Ramanujan. words, there could be another formulation which would bring out Ramanujan's ideas more clearly. But uh, I should add that the formulation made by Zweigers, Ken Ono, Larry Rowland, Catherine Bringman, and his students uh, it was a great leap forward. Uh, wasn't maybe the leap that Ramanujan had in mind, but still it was, a, uh, these are great achievements. But there may be still another way of looking at Ramanujan's mock theta functions that are more in line uh, with Ramanujan's ideas. So there is a participant who wants to know uh, 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 the significance of Ramanujan's tau conjecture. Okay, so it's now been proved and it's really uh, a prototype of much more general conjectures uh, in the theory of uh, modular forms, which was, so that uh, this conjecture was proved by uh, Deline. And uh, it's now just, it's one example, which has just generated a huge amount of mathematics uh, from that one conjecture that Ramanujan had. It's one of the most influential uh, conjectures of all time in number theory because it's generated such a huge amount of, of mathematics. Sir, uh, there is, uh, I think it's the last question. Uh, uh, I mean, it's a very general question. I think if you make a comment uh, on this, then uh, maybe something is firing for the young students who are attending the session. Uh, the question is a very common question, I, as I said. He, Ramanujan never recorded any rigorous proof uh, in his uh, lost notebook or, and uh, anywhere else also. Uh, what was the reason? Well, um, so Ramanujan's uh, papers, his uh, notebooks, um, as I indicated earlier, paper was very expensive. And so to work on, on paper and save his proofs would have just um, required a lot of you know, paper. Uh, so I'm sure when Ramanujan wrote down his results, whether they were in the um, earlier notebooks or lost notebook, if someone said to him, well, how do you prove this particular result in your, in your lost notebook or they had a course in, or in your manuscript or in your notebooks, he would be able then to, uh, you know, reconstruct his proof. So for his own uh, purposes of just recording what he had done, uh, he didn't need to write down the proofs. If someone asked him how to prove such a result, he could actually uh, give his proof, uh, uh, you know, for the person. So uh, in almost all of his results, uh, he did have proofs, I'm sure. Otherwise he wouldn't have uh, discovered these results. Uh, his proofs in many cases were maybe formal. That is maybe he reversed the order of uh, summations or reversed the order of 
a limit and the integral of a limit. Maybe he didn't uh, justify uh, inversions of this type. Uh, but, uh, and if he didn't have a rigorous proof, uh, he would actually say so. Yeah, he would say, uh, my own investigations have not been, I have not been able to prove this rigorously by my own uh, investigations. So he knew when, uh, generally knew when his arguments were not rigorous and when, when they weren't. Uh, it's just that unfortunately we don't know what these arguments were and uh, the proofs we have for many of Ramanujan's results are certainly nowhere near what Ramanujan uh, would have had. In particular for many of his Q series identities, we can prove them because we know them beforehand. In other words, we can verify them. Well, this is not how Ramanujan worked. They came naturally out of work that he, he was doing. And uh, so he clearly had much better proofs of many of the results uh, that uh, we have proved, um, but we just don't know what they are. Is the proof for infinity can, true? Can, can we allow two, uh, two more questions? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, to this, uh, I, I I just want to know uh, in uh, further to this uh, question, uh, the previous one, that uh, it is on record uh, as I you know that uh, Janki, the wife, uh, Janki's statement that uh, when he was on the deathbed, he used to work on the slate, and then he used to write down something on the paper, and there was a box. Uh, near the bed, he used to put all the papers in the box, which is now called manuscript and uh, the lost notebook. Uh, mm -hmm. So is it uh, the fact that he used to prove the results, but never preserved the proof, recorded the final results? Yes, I, I, I think that's absolutely correct. So um, this will, this, this, this will uh, I mean, negate the theory of intuition. What I feel. Yeah, yeah. So, well, I mean, he he has to have intuition, but on the other hand, um, this is intuition that uh, the rest of us uh, don't have. Yeah. But uh, uh, but I mean, he was able to take uh, this intuition yeah. and uh, bring it to uh, fulfillment, uh, bring it to flowering, you know, beautiful flowers, and. Um, make leaps that uh, you know we never would have been able to make. So going from a theta function to these mock theta functions, I mean, this is a huge leap, a huge uh, idea. And uh, you know, if he hadn't made this leap into mock theta functions, uh, of course, I'm just speaking you know, only wildly or conjecturally here, I don't think anyone else would have ever made it. So, you know, if Ramanujan hadn't discovered mock theta functions and their beautiful properties in the last year of his life, no one else would have discovered these things uh, as well. Yeah. Very true. Uh, there's another uh, theory that of Ramanujan's that uh, I can mention where if he hadn't discovered it, no one would have discovered it. So. I emphasize the classical and theory of mock or of ordinary theta functions and the many new results that he had. Well, Ramanujan also had, and I didn't mention these in my lecture, alternative theories of theta functions. So new uh, ways, new kinds of theta functions in new settings. So in particular, he had a cubic theory and a quartic theory of theta functions involving new sets of functions. And uh, I don't see how anyone could have ever imagined that there would be other theories of new functions analogous to the classical theory and his developed classical theory of theta functions. This is a huge leap. And uh, we never would have had these alternative theories if it weren't for Ramanujan. So uh, one of the participants wants you to throw some light on Fermat's last theorem. And his question is, uh, did Ramanujan thought about it to prove? 
Uh, I don't know that uh, he worked on Fermat's last theorem. Uh, he worked on representations of integers in different ways. Um, there is this famous number 1729, the number of ways you can write 17, the smallest integer that's written as a sum of two cubes in two different ways. And there are other results of, of this type. In fact, you can find them in some of the problems that Ramanujan submitted to the Journal of the Indian Mathematical Society. Wow. So, so Ramanujan submitted 58 problems to the Journal of the Indian Mathematical Society. And uh, I urge people to look at them. They're beautiful problems uh, that he submitted. So some of them involve representations of integers. <laughs> I wanted to ask a question. So I think uh, there is no more question. So uh, let me uh, let me uh, thank Professor Bruce. Is the proof for infinity true? Pardon? Do you have any question? If you have any question, please type it. Please. So, uh, Professor Bruce, uh, Bruce, thank you very much uh, for uh, this uh, informative uh, session. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm really thankful for having accepted our uh, in invitation for on a sh uh, short notice. Uh, There is one question, Pro, uh, Professor Bruce. Everyone is uh, one participant is asking. Uh, is I mean this question is very irrelevant, so I am not asking it. But anyway, so thank you very much and uh, thank you uh, uh, all the participants. And uh, at the end only, I would uh, like to add, if uh, especially to the young uh, uh, participants, that uh, there there is a. Uh, recent review article uh, by Professor Bruce and uh, this article, the title of this uh, uh, article is Living with Ramujan for 40 years. It has appeared in December 2019 in uh, uh, Philosophical Transactions of Royal Society. Uh, I'm, I'll recommend every uh, all the youngsters to go through this uh, article uh, and uh, part of uh, this uh, uh, talk you will find in that uh, lecture also and Pro Professor Bruce I still remember as uh, you told me in one of uh, our meeting yeah. that how when you did uh, when you first came across the Ramanujan so I found the same thing in this article also and part of it uh, in this talk also so it was also very uh, inspiring for me as well as for everyone must be and uh, uh, in the last, I would like to express my sincere thanks uh, on the behalf of Bau Banarsi Das University uh, uh, to Professor uh, Bruce Byrne uh, for his kindness. And uh, I, I'm sure that uh, uh, everyone is benefited. And uh, some of the uh, young students uh, will find, will be interested in knowing more about uh, Ramanujan and his work. And uh, the tradition will be carried uh, uh, away. And so, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Oh, thank, you. thank you for the invitation. I hope to see all of you on my next trip to India. Yeah, sure. Definitely, sir. Sure. We hope to have you next. Uh, in session. Session. Okay. Yeah, I will. I'll get in touch with you. Okay. Thank you. So, thank, you thank you, sir. Very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Thank, thank you, Professor Ali. Thank, thank, you, sir. thank you very much for your uh, time oh. and joining yes, us. Sir. Great. It's a great opportunity. Thank so you, great. sir. It was a great opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Congratulations.